Today we are looking at flipped lesson 18 for the fifth grade and today we're going to be looking at multiplying more than one number and then what to do as we think about missing add-ins in or missing factors excuse me in multiplication. And so we can go ahead and start looking at our problem up on the board. It says we have 8 times 5 times 3. And of course, to solve a problem like this, we want to start by grouping, just like we grouped when we did larger addition problems where we were adding more than one add-in. So 8 times 5 is going to give us 40. And then we can multiply 40 times 3. And 40 times 3 is going to give us 120. Now, if working in the horizontal is not your forte or is not the way you understand it best, it is okay to change it to the horizontal so that you see it like this to get you to 40. And then you can even rewrite it again to solve the second part to get to your 120 for your final answer. So we have first look at multiplying three numbers. Sometimes when we look at a multiplication problem like 7 times 24 times 15, when you look at that, it's maybe not the hardest thing, but sometimes because of the commutative property of multiplication, we want to rearrange it to make our multiplication easier. If we were to group it, normally it would be 7 times 4, which is 28. And now we're going to take 28 times 15, which is not the easiest thing to do. It's very doable, but like I said, it's not the easiest thing to do. But if we were to start by rearranging our problem, and instead of taking 7 times 4 first, but instead taking 7, sorry, 15 times 4, instead, 15 times 4, when we multiply those two together, we're going to get an answer of 60. 4 times 5 is 20. 0 goes down, 2 goes up. 4 times 1 plus 2 gives us the 6. And so we have an answer of 60. And now we can take that 60 and multiply by 7. And we're going to get a much simpler multiplication problem of 60 times 7 compared to 28 times 15. And so a much easier problem to get us an answer of 420. And so as you look at your problems in multiplication with those three numbers, it's okay to rearrange the order because of the commutative property and get an easier multiplication problem. Continuing on, we can use this idea to help us understand how to answer a question like this. How many blocks were used to build this shape. Now we could sit here and try and count them all, but of course some of them are hidden because we can't actually see them um, because of the fact that it's 3D and you can't can't get into an image like that. Um, but we can't understand the height and the width and the length of this shape and because of that we can come up with an answer. And so the first thing we can see is that we go two blocks high. And so we have one of our numbers. All right. The next thing that we can see is that we go two blocks wide. And so we have another two there. And then last but not least, now we can go this distance and see we're going to go three that way. And so we have our problem to figure out how many blocks make up this shape. And so we know that 2 times 2 equals 4, and then 4 times 3 is going to equal 12, and so our answer is 12 blocks. And so there is another use for multiplication to help us solve these problems. Now once we take all this into consideration, now we can start doing problems that have missing factors. And so we have n times 4 equals 16. Now there's a couple of methods that we could do to try and solve this. First method, um, really the slowest method, is to, since we're multiplying by 4, that means we could just start adding 4s until 
we get to 16. All right. And that's method number one, because 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is going to get us to 16, which would mean that n equals 4, because 4 fours gives us 16. Method one. Method two is you could take out a multiplication table and line things up and use it to, to figure out where 16 and 4 line up together. And I don't have a multiplication table in this video right here, but you could open up your planner and you can see how that would work. The last way is to think about method three is to look at the multiplication um, families or just the multiples of four. And we can start at the bottom. Four times one equals four. Four times two equals eight. Four times three equals 12. Four times four equals 16. And so step one is to use right, repeated addition. Step two is to use your multiplication table. And I'm doing some abbreviating here. And then step three is to do, just go through your multiples of the given factors to solve for this. And so as we look at this, times 4 is 16. So 4 times 4 gives us 16. We go to the next one, our 4n. This is another way to write a multiplication problem. You'll see it in your book. Just 4 next to a letter means multiply. Um, or any number next to a letter means multiply. And so 4n is going to equal 20. And so we can use in any of these steps to figure out what 20 is. I'm just going to go ahead, since I know that this was, first one was 4 times 4 equals 16. Since I know 20 is 4 more, that means I know that 4 times 5 is going to equal this. And then looking at this last problem, a couple steps. Once again, we have a, another symbol that can be used for multiplication, just a simple dot. Um, first thing we have to do to solve this is we got to join those together to understand a, a 24 there. And so now we have 4 times n equals 24. And I'm going to continue my pattern that I've been using already and understand that 4 times 6 is going to get me 24. And I could have used any of these steps. I could have used repeated addition. I could have pulled out my multiplication table. Or I can start thinking about the multiples that you should have memorized at this stage. Um, so hopefully we're using this one primarily, but if this one doesn't work for you, don't be afraid to fall back on these two steps to help you solve these problems. All right, that's our look at multiplication of multiple numbers and then looking at um, missing factors within a problem. Here's a couple samples that we'll look, take a look at next time. That's it for lesson 18.